Now we're going to do a short video on how to find the tangent vector to a curve with a parametric description in three dimensions. And again, since some of this is kind of small, if you look down in the bottom right hand corner of the YouTube video under the little cog, you should be able to change the resolution of the video to HD, which will make the text a lot more clear. Uh, this is the parametric curve that we're going to be considering. Um, so it's this squiggly shape, and if I scroll in a little bit more, you can see the um, parametric curve that's describing that shape. So in the x-coordinate, the component function is t squared. Then in the y-coordinate, it's sine t. That's what makes it squiggly. Um, and in the z-coordinate, the component function is just 1. That's why this thing is kind of flat. It's all stuck, and it's stuck in the plane z equals 1. And what's happening is it's doing, uh, when t is positive, it's doing a little sine oscillation, but you know, the square is making it go out uh, sort of quadratically fast, and the other oscillation comes from negative time when it does the, it does uh, something similar. You can see from the square, it can't tell the difference between positive and negative time. Um, okay, so that is the setup, and now let's find some tangent vectors to that curve at some points. So, you know, the secret to getting a tangent vector is to take the derivative of the parametric, uh, the parametric equation for the curve. So here is the equation for the curve, and to get the derivative, um, we just take the derivative component by component. So the derivative of t squared is 2t, the derivative of sine is cosine, and the derivative of 1 is, is 0. So now we're going to go through and look at the tangent vector at various points on the curve. Um, so if you can see the sage code, this, this variable um, loc, loc, I guess for location, is, is picking uh, the time. Maybe it should be time. <laughs> so this is time equals zero. So let's see what we have here in this picture. So you can see there are several arrows. Um, uh, the, this blue vector the green vector and the red ver vector are just the x, y, z axes. And the tangent vector that we're interested in is the purple vector. Um, so how do, you, how do you make this purple vector coming out of the origin? The purple vector coming out of the origin is just 0 plugged into the parametric description of the derivative. So if you plug in 0, you get 0, 1, 0. And so the, this purple vector is just 0, 1, 0. And then, so you can see that it, it comes sort of smoothly out of the curve at the corresponding point. I, I made this purple, um, this translation of, of the tangent vector onto the curve where it should go. So it should go with this point um, on the original curve at where, where the, you know, if we imagine this is a particle, this is where the particle is at time zero. And this tangent vector coming out of it sort of describes its speed and its direction. So that's one. Um, that's what it looks like when t is equal to zero. Let's check some other values. So we, we're also going to look at what happens when time is one. So um, <clears throat> at time, time one, you can see the little particle has gotten a little bit further along the curve. Maybe I can zoom in some. And I, I, I again wrote both versions of the purple vector. One is coming out of the origin. And so that's sort of, uh, quote unquote, really what the, uh, what the tangent vector gives you if you plug in zero into its parametric description. But then it's also kind of fun to translate it onto the curve and paste it there. Um, but as far as like an answer to a question on our exam or something, this one coming out of the origin would just be fine. And you get that one just by plugging one into the derivative or you know I say one because we're considering time one right now but it's, you should just plug in whatever time we're interested in and let's go down a little bit further um, so now we're looking at it, what's happening when time is two and this t you can see that the tangent vector kind of really gives you an idea of how the little particle is moving <coughs> so it's heading um, towards this this cross and it's it's figure eight shape there and maybe I'll zoom in a little bit. You can see the tangent vector really does kind of come straight out of uh, straight out of the the curve. If this were an object moving in space, you can think of it in terms of physics as you know where 
which direction the particle would be going and the velocity it would have just by inertia. And then to make it move in sort of the strange direction, if this were a physical situation, some outside force would have to be acting on the body to make it follow this path. And I think we have one more to consider. Yeah, so at time t equals 3, you can see it's getting pretty close to um, the, the intersection. And at time, just for fun, I did time t equals pi, which is when it actually achieves that intersection. And you can see the purple tangent vector coming directly out. Um, and it also seems like the, the tangent vector is getting longer, right? The particle is speeding up. And that's because of that square term in the x-coordinate. So it's going, you know, it's increasing in speed as a square. So sort of like it's falling. And um, yeah, so it's increasing speed is reflected in the increasing length of the tangent vector. And that's about all I have to say about that.